Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. And give birth. And God said, to a child you are giving birth to, he's a prophet. He came to fulfill divine agenda. If it's a child you want to give birth and wear uh, blue sneakers and blue uh, shirt and white short knicker to prove to the other person, <laughs> you will destroy his destiny. Until your heart is corrected, no child can be born. Until she came to God and said, Father, if you give this child to me, I'll give him back to you. Now you can raise the prophet. The next year, she came back with the child. Most of you have not entered certain seasons because your heart is wrong. Your neighbor has taunted you until you think the goal of wealth is to prove to them that you too can be wealthy. You are joking. If God gives you that kind of wealth, you will use it to show off. Kingdom will not be advanced. And so one thing that God will insist on must be right before a man possesses or wins moments of the spirit is that the heart must be right. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due season, the same scripture is in James 4, 7, he will exhort you. That means even if you are exhorted, God will be the one to elbow you because of the heart. So Proverbs 4.23 says, guide your heart with all diligence. It says, out of it are the issues of life. You cannot enter seasons except as your heart is right. And this, this particular issue is more severe for women. Because you people process more than men. You are like incubators. That's why you are the ones who have womb. We don't have womb. You can keep something inside you for nine months. And it can germinate and grow into a full full blown human being so you have potential to incubate so you must be careful what you incubate don't allow malice enter there you will you will germinate that malice until it can raise an army of bitterness and you will kill somebody you will not know and you don't know is that unforgiveness is that bitterness that will stop you from achieving the great destiny that god has given to you you must check this heart well if you will win seasons. These things I'm teaching you is beyond coming to say, I decree over you that this week you will prosper. If your heart is not wrong, the prophecy will sit on your head for 30 years and it will not manifest. I was teaching my people on Tuesday. I said, one of the prayer we must pray is Lord, help my heart. Lord, help my heart. Psalm 139 verse 24, search my heart, O God. Try my reins. Help me. Help me. Help me. There is something here. There's an incubator here. Help me to purge it. Help me to purge it. Because if your heart is not helped, ah, you will lose a lot of things. Look at Judas. He was supposed to be one of the 12 disciples. Jesus said, you will sit with me on 12 thrones in eternity to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Which honor meets that level of honor? That you will sit with Jesus, but the heart was wrong. The Bible says Satan entered his heart. And when Jesus saw it, he knew that it's over. If a man's heart is wrong, even God can't help him. Jesus said that which you must do, do quickly. Now, ask yourself, when Satan was at, was attacked Peter, the Bible said in Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. When you are recovered, strengthen your brethren. Why didn't he pray for Judas? Because Satan entered his heart. If the heart is compromised, you cannot be restored. It takes divine mercy. If a man's heart is compromised and is restored, that's the highest revelation of mercy. Look at the book of Acts chapter 5. And then I have showed up. And Peter looked at him and said, why have you let Satan enter your heart? He fell down and died. Go and read your Bible. Everybody whose heart was compromised was rejected. He looked at Saul. He said, when you were small in your own heart, did I not make you king? Heart 
was compromised, he was rejected. So, as I studied my Bible, I discovered that when a man's heart is wrong, God can't work with him. No matter the promise that was available. This is why the issue of the heart is too important. If you want this conference to profit you, if it will mean anything to you, you must fight to empty your heart on the altar. Don't live here with any garbage in your heart. If your heart is wrong, you are finished. And I tell you, one of the places the devil fights the most is in the heart. And it is worse in this generation. In the generation of mama, if you meet your friend and they talk, that's when you'll be hot. Now you don't need to meet your friend. You can sit on Instagram and meet 30 friends. And they project things that will pain you. And if you are not careful, you'll be weeping in your bedroom alone. That's the, that is the irony of this particular generation. A man can be excited alone in his room. And a man can commit suicide in his room. Not talking to anybody, but looking around the world. And people are good at projecting fake life. The, the, the lady gave birth and she's doing what she doesn't have to do just so that that her enemy will see her. She puts her child on the bicycle. She's, she went to the garden. She's throwing the child. All of that. She's not doing it because she loves the child. It's because she wants you to know that she has given birth and you are still barren. Let it pain you. And every day you come and look and then bitterness is growing. Deliver yourself from that evil because it will rob you of many things. A woman and a husband who quarreled, they are going out, they do uniform, they hold themselves. And you see the woman overly tapping the husband, is fake. They are not talking to themselves at home. But she just wants her friends to know that her husband is a honey. She will buy a gift for herself and put online, see what my husband just got me. It's a lie. It's a three month salary. Meanwhile, you and your bedroom, you cannot sleep. Because of that fakeness, you better rid yourself of those bodies. You don't need it. See, as I am like this, anybody succeeding, thank God for you. I'm on my own lane. I'm on my own lane. A man who is doing marathon cannot compete with somebody running 100 meters. Your, ra your race is for 10 seconds. My own race is for 10 hours. So if you like sprint, I am juggling. It's when I have run for nine hours that my own journey begins. So I'm not moved with what God is doing with you. I thank God that he's doing it with you. That means it is possible. But for me to be troubled, God forbid. Our destinies are unique. The Bible said you are ingrained in the palm of his hand. The Bible said even the hair of your head is numbered. So it doesn't matter who is prospering. Women of God, your time will come. let anything trouble your heart you will lose your destiny I was telling my people in this generation focus is very important focus it will help you to guard your heart in 1st Kings 20 verse 40 a parable was told to the king by the prophet he said my lord gave me a servant to keep he said as I was busy here and there I lost him that's how many lost their seasons that's how many lost their, their moments. They are looking here and there. God gave you a grace for intercession. You are supposed to hide for five years. But the person you started with is now a global evangelist. And you abandoned what God gave you. You too started a ministry online. You have lost your destiny. You have lost your destiny. God told you to study and become a leader. He wants to give you a place in the government. And suddenly you saw another lady who started business and she's doing well and instead of building capacity for leadership you abandoned it you want to chase money you have lost your destiny one of the major problems we have on earth is dislocation many are dislocated from their destiny and that is why they can't maximize moments the moment that a government official has is different from the moment that an athlete has so if you are not on your lane you can't meet your moments this is why you must guard your heart. Stay focused so that you can access everything God has put in your path. Finally, how do you access moments? It's by dogged and aggressive pursuit for those moments. Anybody you see who is maximizing moment is an aggressive pursuer of moments. 
Nobody who is casual about moments can achieve anything. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. It said the kingdom of God suffered violence. Until the time of John. It said the kingdom of God suffered violence. And it said the violent take it by force. If you are not aggressive, you can never seize or win moments. In Luke 8, 43 to, to 52, we saw the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said she had spent all that she had on doctors. She was not better. And suddenly they told her that one Jesus who lays hands on the dead and they come back to life, who lays hands on the blind at the sea, who raises cripples was passing by. She asked again, wait, you mean that is possible? They said, yes. He did it in Capernaum. He did it in Zabulon. He did it in Jerusalem. Are you serious? And he's passing here? <laughs> Let me tell you, in her time, if you have issue of blood, you can come among people. You can be killed. Because they consider it to be defilement. But the woman was too aggressive to have regard for protocol. When she heard that Jesus was passing, the Bible said she came in the press. That's a sick person. Imagine somebody who has been hospitalized for 12 years, rises up from bed and she enters a crowd and she's pushing and pushing until she grabbed Jesus. Immediately he stopped. Do you know what it means when Jesus stopped? That's the revival stopping. Because if Jesus is moving, that's the move of God. The woman stopped the revival because she was aggressive. And Jesus said, who touched me? Peter looked at him, master, you are an intelligent person. Which question are you asking? Everybody is touching you. They are not only touching you, they are pressing on you. He said, this one is a different touch. There are those who touch in order to be close. There are those who touch to snap pictures so that their friends will see. There are those who touch so that they can be called relevant and leader. This one is touching for an affliction to end. It's an aggressive person. Who touched me? And she turned and the woman was there. And the woman told her her ordeal. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Oh. Jesus was not aware that she was there. That means God does not need to know that you came. You can make your presence known. Jesus was not aware that she was coming. Jesus was not aware that she needed healing. But there is enough for everybody who is aggressive enough. Because the virtue is flowing. And she made her way and touched the master. That is not all. There's another man called Bartimaeus. The man was so named after his infirmity. You know that level of reproach? You had a problem, the whole city now begins to call you the barren woman. The whole city begins to call you the unmarried woman. The whole city begins to call you the leprous woman. The whole city. And the guy's spirit was not broken. One day she heard that Jesus was coming to Jericho. He said, which Jesus are you talking about? They say, it's the one that raised the dead. He's the one that healed the blind. He's the one that opened deaf ear. Is it that same Jesus? They said, yes. He was blind, so he didn't know when he's coming or when he was going. He now took his time, went and sat at the gate and began to shout. From when Jesus came until he was leaving, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy. Nobody answered him. He was there shouting. Only God knows how long Jesus was in Jericho. He didn't stop. That's aggression. That's desperation. Thou son of David, have mercy. He won't stop. Jesus passed, entered. He kept screaming until Jesus was coming out. Some people now showed up. Are you not tired of shouting? Keep quiet. The Bible said when they shut him up, he would turn the other side. He started shouting, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. They said, keep quiet. Do you see the people following him? That's collectors, Pharisees, governors are all looking for him. You, this dirty blind man who has not even been able to take his bath. Who told you he has your time? The guy turned to another side. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He closed his ear to everybody. When you are desperate, you don't care what your neighbor is saying. When you are desperate, you don't care what your friends is saying. When you are desperate, you don't care what your family is saying. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Until a point came, the Bible said, and Jesus stopped. Oh, I love
have men that can stop Jesus. See, it is good to pursue after Jesus, but there is another realm. There is a realm where you are not just pursuing. You can stop the master. And the master stopped and turned and said, bring him. Guess what? The people who told him to shut up were now the people that told him, hurry, hurry, he's calling you. Psychophancy of men. That's why you don't need to stop when they were mocking you. Those who were mocking you, they will be forced to celebrate with you. Those who were mocking you, they will be forced to celebrate you. I prophesy, this is your hour of intervention. And he showed up and Jesus looked at him. Guess what? He gave him a blank check. When you are desperate, you have the right to anything you want. What will you want me to do for you? He said that I might see again. Jesus, is that all? He said that is all, Master. That is all, Master. That I might see again. Mark 10, 46 to 52. And Jesus said, receive your eyesight back. He collected his eyesight and he began to dance. That is when those who are mocking you are going to see something. Because you are not dancing to taunt them. But your dancing will become a message to the whole city. The Bible said when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream dreams. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And he said, the hidden we say, they are God. Have done something good for them. I profess over someone before you live here the season that will bring glory to your life you step into it in the name of Jesus what you are going through is your desperation enough to swallow it it's your desperation did you read about Hannah? Hannah the Bible said when she was praying her mouth was shaking like a drunken woman and even the, the priest couldn't discern he said you daughter of Belia why did you reduce yourself to be used of alcohol she said no this is not alcohol I am only responding to the burdens of my heart I'm responding. Hope you know that Eli stop hearing God. But because of the weight of our desperation, even a man that had no relationship with God spoke and God answered. I don't know what you are going through. But see, everyone who is desperate, this is your time. I speak over you. Every challenge you are going through goes down now. Isaac told this one. He said, when you become tired, you will break the yoke off your shoulder. See, if you are not desperate, there are things you cannot see. Some of us who used to watch football, the best of a footballer does not manifest at the beginning of the match. When the, the match usually is played for 90 minutes, by the time you approach 75 minutes, where is 15 minutes to go and a team is losing? That's when footballers become volatile. Because at that point, it's no longer about skill, it's about desperation. If you don't score that one goal, you are about to leave the tournament. And you see footballers begin to do wonders that they have never done before. See, somebody has reached his 99th level. Everything you are going through will go down now. God respects rocket faith. When a man's faith becomes rocket, he can arrest the attention of heaven. How many of you have read Matthew 15 from verse 21 to 28 the story of the Canaanite woman and is it not so amazing that most of these people were women the woman heard that Jesus came to the coast of Tyre and Sidon and she was not a Jew and she showed up and said master my daughter is thoroughly vexed with demons come and heal him 
Jesus didn't answer. Imagine you are praying and God is silent. Some of you will stop and, be, and say, I'm now an atheist. God does not answer prayer. You are joking. There are certain things that God will allow you to see the level you can go to. And Jesus didn't answer until the disciples became frustrated. I said, Lord, if you will not attend to her, drive her away. And Jesus told them, I am not sent to everybody now. Until I resurrect, my assignment is only to the Jews. And she is not a Jew. And you know what Jesus said? It is not good to give the children's bread to dogs. So it is bad enough that God didn't answer you. Imagine that God used an idiomatic expression that qualifies you as a dog. Yet the woman didn't go back. She said, even the dogs have the right to eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. Immediately, Jesus stopped and turned to her. Woman, I didn't reject you. I actually came for Israel because Israel is the only people that have faith. Now you have demonstrated faith, so you too are an Israelite. He said, go, thy daughter is made whole. So even when God says no, and that no is not his will, but that no is conditional, a desperate man will meet that condition and that no will become yes. I don't know what you are going through, but if you are desperate for the next two minutes, I want somebody to cry. This is my window. I must take it. This is my hour. I must take it. This is why I told you, you don't just win moments, you seize them. The world is Catalambano. A people who cry, a people who roar, a people who insist can always receive the best of God. Can you cry for the next two minutes? I'm tired of this pain. I'm tired of this affliction. I'm tired of this stagnation. I'm tired of this poverty. I'm tired of this prayerlessness. I'm tired of this frustration. This is my time. This is how you take moments. He said as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. There are certain moments that are conquered in the place of insistence by prayer. Can you insist now? Marakataya. Lele lele lele. Maronia Pakata. Hear me. When you start working with God, you will discover that there are two kinds of no with God. There is a no of God that is no because it's not his will. You can't change it, no matter how you pray. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. He said, if it is thy will, let this cup pass me by. That was not the will of God. So no prayer could change it. But there is also a no of God that is conditional. That means it is no until you show faith. It is no until you show desperation. It is no until you show joy. It is no until you forgive. It is no until... See, that is the no that you become desperate about to change. And trust me, most of our crises are within the realm of the conditional no. But we have not met certain requirements. I want to give you two minutes. Two minutes of travail. For that thing that requires God's intervention to change. For somebody to cry. He say, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So conditional no's are dependent on your response. Can we pray for two minutes? Katapora Tafina Zagapatila Paragata Ah Oh Adona Hiya ho Hiya ho Oh secret place Hiya ho 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 Oh Adona Hiya ho Hiya ho 
Oh, see place. Fire. Oh. Can we pray like people who will not take no for an answer? Reke Paruda Tavagata. Raka Padonda Paragatia. Latelina Mantabo Rabakate. Zakapatina Paragatosh. Zetetina. Vanta Pato Parete. Zekatina Paragata. Mando Bragatia Zanzaka. Bragatale Shabatido. Braka Totalina. Mantarado. Rakaboa Shaya. Some of you, your only son that you trusted God for in prayer that he gave you is about to bring disgrace. How can your son travel to Canada and all of a sudden he say I'm a woman? How can the son that you trusted God for suddenly turns 18 and he becomes a smoker? He becomes a thief. This is where things are changed. This is where we seize moments in the spirit and we say no to the agenda of the devil. A generation desperate. How can God promise you that is your season to get married and every suitor that comes says they must sleep with you or they will not marry you? How can God promise you that you will give birth to kings and now you have been married for 10 years? There is no child. It's time to travel. Things can be born. Seasons can be born. Moments can be born. Times can be born. Kairos seasons can be created from the altar. As soon as Zion travelled, she brought forth her children. Manta, Perado, Baragata, Zagabata, Sezevina, Marniado, Pariata, Manderegabatuna, Sabaka, Zagatalita, Marodia, Paparada, Regedegadina, Salabante, Ando, Sapa. Ah, Warwa, Tetetetela. Sisters Fellowship International, travel in the spirit. Show your aggression, the rockedness of your faith. Mande Pera Baruta. we do later tonight but please lift your hands wherever you are standing the Holy Ghost is telling me now that everybody that has been stagnated the devil has tied you to a spot there is a power available now to break those cords see Christianity is not a, a religion what we are doing here is not fanatism it is a spiritual force that has the power to impact on existential realities. This is not a charade. I had four sisters, four. 36, 34, 32, not married. That was when I knew this thing is not about title or preaching. It takes power. It said, when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech declaring unto you the counsel of God. I came in the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith will not be built on the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men is about theorizing. When we talk about spiritual things, it's something that can create change in the physical. This is why we trust God 
because it can be proven. We are not, we are, this is not a, a religious charade. Destinies can be altered. My wife just gave birth 12 days ago. Eight months, doctor showed up. Amniotic fluid is too much. Sugar level is gone up. What do you mean by that? I cancel it. One week later, oh, premature, what, what, whatever. Premature labor, but I said, what do you mean? It was written that the child will be in the womb for nine months. That child is not coming out until the time is accomplished. And everything went to normal. We are not talkers. He said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables when we spoke to you about the coming king. These are things that can be proven. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the power of the Spirit. Lift your hands toward heaven. Chains are about to break here. Amen. Some of you is marital stagnation. Some of you is delaying childbearing. Some of you is frustration around your finances. Some of you is frustration around relationship. Father, in the name of Jesus. Alleluia. 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 Can be quiet now stop praying just lift your hands this is the moment of the spirit yokes are about to be lifted because you are choked i don't want you to be aggressive because the fire of god will fall on some of you literally here now father wherever they are standing everyone here stagnated by powers beyond them powers of darkness manipulating circumstances manipulating men to stagnate them in the name of Jesus, I stand as a custodian of the oracles of God. I decree over you now, let the chains break. There's an anointing that moves men. He said the hand of God was upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab unto Jezreel. Ushers, wherever they are standing, that oil is coming upon them. Help me now. Help me now. Bring them here. I want to lay hands on some of them. In the name of Jesus, carry that oil now. Carry that oil now. Carry that oil. Mara Bakatone. Vera Barota. Bakatanita. Help them, ushers. Carry that oil. I release the grace for speed. Move into your destiny. Help them on the galleries. It's getting aggressive. Manta. Barakato. Sabatina. Oh, yeah. ah. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Here, here, here. Out of my belly. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow. River. Bring them here River. from the gallery River. on the floor. First, second gallery. Carry that fire now. Let it flow. 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 So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. 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 So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. 
it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. So when the river flows, it begins to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. So let it flow right here, right now. When the river flows, Bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. So let it flow right here, right now. When the river flows, when the river flows, it begins to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow, so let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. the Lord wants to release now. Some of you may be in the area of biological children, but for some of you, it's for entrepreneurship. Your hands will produce things. Many things. There are seven of you here that an anointing will come on you like a whirlwind and shift you to a new dimension. Father, on the floor, on the first, second gallery and any overflow available, I decree now, let that wind rest upon them. Let that wind pass through them. Let it pass through them. Carry the grace for fruitfulness. Help them, ushers. Too aggressive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please help them. I come in the volume of the books. It was written about me. To do your will, O oh God. Please help that lady on the top floor. Let her not be injured. Come in the volume of the books, it was written about me to do your will, O oh God. I come in the volumes, come in the volume of the books, it was written about me to do your will, O oh God. I come in the volumes, I come in the volume of the books. It was written about me to do your will. I will do your will. I will do your will to do your will. I will do your will. Before we return for the next service, spend time to pray. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. There are some angelic entities that have come into this region. And some of them can encounter you while you are walking, even in the markets, walking around. So stay sensitive. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you, if you have just said that prayer, 
You are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.